blowing up your phone? Oh, uh, my mom. Oh, okay. I like dogs. Josh Peck has always been a personal joy for me to watch on screen. Ever since growing up with him on shows and movies like The Amanda Show, Max Keeble's Big Move, Snow Day, and oh yeah, uh, Drake and Josh, his adult acting career hasn't been the most exciting, although his YouTube channel has been entertaining. Stuff like Grandfather, the Red Dawn remake, well, not the best outings, the on-screen charisma Josh Peck gives off is what keeps me invested into what projects he is going on. Going from Nickelodeon to Disney now with his newest gig, we have the remake or a continuation of the 1989 Tom Hanks movie in the form of a TV show of the same name, Turner and Hooch. The show just premiered on Disney Plus and I figured that I would give it a watch. Check out if the show can capture my attention enough in episode one to keep me coming back to finish off the season. So if you were interested in checking this show out, I hope you enjoy the video with my thoughts on the series premiere. Make sure to hit that like button as it helps out the video and I'll collab with Josh Peck one day. Mark my words. You're a fun mind, son of a fun. So the series starts off with Scott Turner Jr., same name as Tom Hanks' character in the original film, just with the added on Jr., working as a U.S. Deputy Marshal in San Francisco, solving crimes with his superior, Jessica. His life is shown to be heavily focused on his work life and not so much on his personal life. He lives alone, he is single, and he is a bit detached from his family. He's very organized, cleanly, and he has life down to a specific schedule. Is now being tasked with a big case of protecting a criminal, turning in his band of of other criminals in return seeking a deal and well protection. All day though, Scott's mom has been trying to get a hold of him, but he hasn't been able to pick up the phone. So after work, when he is finally back home, his sister and nephew come barging over with a large dog, a bag full of supplies to take care of him, and very little explanation of what's going on. We find out that his father, who is pretty much alluded to be the original Scott Turner from the movie, has passed away and wanted his son to have his current dog, who looks just like and is named after the original Hooch. There's only one problem. Scott here isn't really a dog person, or in anything person for that matter. He doesn't have any room for chaos in his life and the first thing that Hooch causes is chaos. So in the morning when heading into work, he can't leave Hooch home because he's running amok inside, decides to bring the dog along with him. While on the way, they end up in pursuit of the bad guys who have now just kidnapped the criminal they were meant to protect, turning a regular car chase into this overly dramatic, over the top, cars flipping overhead, pipes falling off trucks, near death crashes experience for all. It does kind of come out of nowhere, at least the level of the action shown here. A car chase, sure, no problem, but cars flipping right over the car, swerving and drifting to avoid obstacles all while trying to train the dog not to get in the way while in the middle of the chase. And it all ends up in what seems like a failure. The bad guys abandon the car before it blows up while Hooch is preoccupied by the garbage around the dumpster. And the dog now being in the office causing a scene towards the client's lawyer and the FBI agent starts a connective chain of events going forward. Jessica puts Erica, a dog trainer for the K-9 unit training division for the marshals in contact with Scott who immediately have this awkward flirty chemistry. Erica ends up agreeing to help Scott and Hooch work out and essentially train their bond going forward as Scott agrees not to just give up on and give away the dog. The next day at work, however, Scott and Jessica are taken off the case, but not before passing the same lawyer who now doesn't get barked at by Hooch. So once they get back home, Scott finally reads the letter that his father left for him regarding Hooch and it being the final message to him before he passed. Here we have a touching breakdown moment while reading the letter while Hooch scooches up close to Scott and it helps put things in perspective for him. This causes Scott to start seeing the pattern of Hooch's behavior towards some people and noticed he didn't bark again at the lawyer today like he did yesterday. Erica then explains to Scott how dogs can pick up on things that humans can't, and this leads the case in a new direction. While no longer assigned to it, both Scott and Jessica, and even Hooch, investigate further into the clues to find out who is truly behind the kidnapping of the criminal they were originally tasked with to protect. Leading up to another action scene at a warehouse filled with a shootout, fire, and explosions. Scott and Hooch end up solving the case, effectively putting them in good favor with their boss again, and putting him, Hooch, and Jessica as a canine unit with help from Erica for dog training in the marshals. I'm leaving out a bunch of parts here, of course, because I didn't want to spoil too much for yourself. The mystery, the details, all that stuff that I would like you guys to figure out if you do decide to watch it. But as far as the premiere, that is where we leave off after episode one of the series. Aside from one final stinger at the very end, alluding to a big case that Scott's father was working on before he passed, giving us a larger plot to follow as the show goes on. That is a health code violation!
I think what shines brightest here is the charm of Chosh, Peck, and Hooch, and maybe just the gentle nature of the show itself. It has more of the action, explosion, TV drama than I thought it would, but it still embodies a way more family-friendly vibe. While still having blood and guns, it keeps it pretty open and light for a general audience. I also like that it keeps the tone of the show less serious in the serious moments. During the middle of the shootout, while this back and forth firing at each other is occurring, the criminal they are supposed to protect, who is now lying in the ground in the middle of the shootout, has to interject logic into the nonsense happening, mentioning that everyone is a bad shot here, and that why are they not just shooting through the boxes as the bullets go through wood? And for a PG-rated show, I was surprised about what they let slide while still giving it this rating. Although nothing here would be worse than what you would see on the Disney-owned channel ABC Family, just saying the PG rating and this coming from Disney did have me feeling that this would be a lot less involving of that stuff. And worse as in what they can get away with showing, not worse as in bad, by the way. It really feels so far like a light-hearted, easy-to-digest watch, which right off the bat may not be enough for some to keep you entertained, or be what you are exactly looking for for your entertainment. For me personally, though, as someone who watches so many shows and movies a week, it sometimes is nice to have something on that doesn't demand my full brain's capabilities to take in. I don't have to connect the dots or theorize what's coming next. I can take the show episode by episode and find enjoyment in that. Although the first episode leaves us on a mystery to follow, it doesn't seem like it needs me, the viewer, to put the pieces together in the interim between episodes. I feel it's something that will all come to a head when the first season is over, or something that will play out in the series beyond that. The comedy itself may only have a few laugh out loud or chuckle worthy moments, thanks mainly to performances from our leads or the awkward conversations specifically between Scott and Erica. It's a little on the nose with the script and how most likely certain situations will play out down the road, but like I said, it still has enough charm here to keep me interested beyond the predictability. My hopes are that the show takes the not so seriousness of everything and plays a little into it more, while still delivering a fun ride for a drama series that we have seen so many entries into every year, but none of them have Josh Peck, so this is already a leg up. But for real, I'm excited for what the series has to offer. I will be checking out episode two and the rest of the series, so maybe I'll tweet about it on Twitter as well throughout the weeks. Either way, I had a fun time here today checking out the first episode. <laughs> So yeah, those are my thoughts on the series premiere of Turner and Hooch. Now I would love to hear yours down below in the comments. Are you into this show? Are you not sold on the show based on episode one? Please feel free to share with me down below. I appreciate you checking out this video. It does mean a lot to me. You choose to spend a few moments of your day here. Hit that like button if you want to see more videos like this as it truly helps out the video. Maybe I will check back in with where the show is at once the season is over. If that's something you would like, again, please let me know. And as always, subscribe to be a part of my journey through movies and television and how these films and shows affected my life in the past and present. I'll be back soon with another video, but until then, later.